So guys, today I'm going to be talking about my everyday carry survival essentials. Hopefully you like this nice little mix up. I figured I'd really change this one up. And before we get started, I do want to note that this doesn't uh, necessarily act as a EDC guide or is not an update for what I carry entirely. But today I'm going to be going over specifically what I carry on an everyday basis that I carry for survival situations. So without any further ado, let's get into to this. So for the first part for my survival EDC, and it may seem kind of funny because most people probably already carry a phone, but the first thing for me is a phone. And the reason why the phone is the first thing is because the phone in an everyday carry situation is really the only tool that you can easily carry that's kind of like a transformer and what i mean by this is that the phone isn't just one thing i can do more than just make calls on this phone i can have a flashlight i can have a survival guide a first aid guide i can have many different things on this phone to make it a far more valuable asset in a survival or even emergency situation so that's why the smartphone in particular is my first choice because like i said you know with a knife or with a flashlight it's only really ever going to be just that you know you can't transform a knife into a flashlight and you can't transform a flashlight into a knife now i do know there are some uh, knives that are out there that have flashlights built into them but what i'm specifically talking about and with the knives i'm going to be showing you know you can't transform any of the knives that i have into flashlights and you can't transform any of the flashlights that i have into uh, knives or you know anything like that whereas this you know it can allow you to make phone calls it can allow you to have flashlight survival guide uh, first aid guide and all those different things all in one package plus you depending on what kind of smartphone case you put on On your phone if you do prefer to have a case you can also have survival gear in it as it stands right now with this awesome survival case that I make that you guys can go check out you know I have even more survival gear right in the back of the survival case so you know, I have even more gear now with that survival phone case on there. The next piece is probably really one of the, or the second most important thing, is some way of starting fire. Now, I like to carry two different methods of starting fire, and you may call me a little bit overcautious here, but you do have to keep in mind I am in Alaska, and especially in the winter, you know, uh, you do not want to be fooling around, and you do not want to have a method that could potentially not work without having a backup. So what I carry is one a zippo lighter which is charged i hope you guys can see that flame i'm not sure you guys can see the flame yeah so this one is charged i keep it always charged on me and then should this one ever get soaked because the one disadvantage of a zippo lighter or a bic lighter or any type of lighter that isn't storm proof uh is that if you were to drop this in like a lake or if you were to drop this in a Thing of water or even in wet snow like heavy wet snow this would not work I've actually tried it before so as a backup I carry the really at least for me faithfully reliable exotac nano striker XL and this being a very you know a ferro rod it's very basic I know this is gonna work even if it gets completely soaked it you know i know this is going to work and something that i really like about this setup in particular is that i know i have a striker built into this system while the knives i'm going to show here in a little bit would also strike this ferro rod uh, this alone can strike itself and so something that's something that's very important for me because rocks you know that i'm sure i could find something to strike it but even if i can't once again if it's 50 below i don't want to be fooling around for long trying to find something to help strike this ferro rod so that's the reason in particular i'm carrying an exotac and then i have the zippo lighter and once again i would try and use the lighter if at all possible because the flame is so much better than the spark but if not, you know, I would use the ferro rod. This part for me is a good sturdy knife. Now, if you guys have watched any of my EDC updates, you'll know <coughs> that I always carry multiple knives. And so while I'll generally have some nicer knife 
for like a sabenza for opening packages or letters, I always make sure to carry a stout knife on me. And so I really want to take that note, uh, you know, drive it home that not only do I carry those normal knives for opening packages, but I always have some sort of knife that I know I can baton, whether it's a folder like this that I know I can baton. I've batoned with this uh, Adamus before. And if you couldn't already tell, yes, you can baton with this Adamus while locked and it will not break on you because it is an extremely tough knife. Or I'll carry some smaller fixed blade like this Camp Muck or like my SE3. Just some stout knife that I know I can baton with if I have to. I know I can pry on the tip without it snapping. I know I can, you know, use these knives in a more extreme way. And I'm not saying I would in a survival situation, but in a survival situation, I don't know what I'm going to have to do. So if I can at all possible choose the toughest knives or knife knives I have then I definitely will so I always make sure to have a stout knife on me whether it be something like this Adamus or something like this uh, LT Wright Camp Muck or my SE3 or my uh, Pull Force November 1 always something that's stout and robust will be on me along with like I said other smaller more lighter duty knives part for me is a flashlight and while I did hit on the fact that you know I can turn this uh, phone over here into a flashlight you know that is an emergency situation and generally I would use the flashlight on here to find the flashlight the more dedicated flashlight if I had to or this would be a flashlight that I would use to find a more powerful flashlight essentially it's not something that I would want to rely upon but if I had to I could definitely use it but I always make sure to try and carry a more powerful powerful flashlight on me or a dedicated flashlight because not only is this flashlight more powerful than this one but with this one I'm draining its battery overall so that means that you know I my calls will have to be shorter or I can't spend as much time on the survival guide or whatever on here so there are definite reasons to have a dedicated flashlight and I do make sure to always have one on me because flashlights are very necessary even if you are in the land of the sun you know in the summer where our sun never goes down I've hit on this I think before you know there are still places that get dark and there are still power outages so you can be in the middle of some building and a power goes out well you know it may be sunny outside but it's still dark where you are immediately so you definitely Definitely need a flashlight to see your way in the dark so I always have one in that particular circumstance another nice thing about dedicated flashlights like these is oftentimes if you have something just like a little bit of steel wool you can often start fires with the batteries that are in these flashlights um, same can also be said by the way with phones if you are if your phone has a removable battery you just have to find the po positive and negative terminals and link them with steel wool and it'll start a fire as well so anyways you know with the batteries in either of these two objects you can also start fires now the next thing is a water bottle now I don't always carry a stainless steel water bottle but this is the clean canteen I have this one out here just for reference but stainless steel would be preferable, especially for a survival, everyday carry situation. But definitely having some water or the availability of water um, is very important. And I think I've talked about this when I was talking about the plastic bottles. Uh, the bottle, plastic bottles, you can definitely boil so long as you have water in them. It will not totally ruin the bottle. Uh, as far as it won't let the water out but I would not encourage it because it does release bad toxins into the water and will permanently damage the water bottle but if it's in last case scenario and you do need a boil water you can definitely boil with plastic but stainless steel is a lot better and once again uh, knowing where you're going is a big thing like if I know I'm going out because sometimes like there's just going to my town and then there's like going out to central Alaska and if I know in that day that I'm going out to central Alaska which for those who don't know is like over 100 miles away from Fairbanks if I know I'm going that far away then I'll definitely take something like the clean canteen uh, just on the possibility if I have to boil water with it but if I'm just going to be going to my city and there's a very low probability of me going into a survival situation I'll probably just take a plastic water bottle but 
they always have some type of water bottle. They're very important because one, they allow you to carry water or carry just anything in general. And secondly, they allow you to have some sort of water, which is a necessity for life. So then the next thing is some kind of marker or some type of pen. My preference is to a Sharpie because generally Sharpies will leave a very distinctive mark on just about everything. Uh, they don't do as well on things like right in the rain, but if you have to leave a note on a piece of birch bark or whatever, these are very nice to have. You can also get them in a variety of different colors. If I was going for a survival situation, I would probably try and carry on me personally like a black one for just everyday writing and then a yellow or an orange or really uh, out there color that or a really stand out color for marking on trees because what you can do with sharpies is you, if you have to or if you need to let people know where you're going you can always just go up to a tree like I said especially a birch bark tree and just write down the coordinates or say I'm going this way you know or you can use arrows to point to where you've gone so that's what I like about sharpies and once again sharpies leave a very large mark as opposed to a pen because you can do something similar with a pen but with a pen it's often a lot harder because they leave a lot smaller mark than a Sharpie does. So that's why I prefer the Sharpie for a survival situation. Lastly is a multi-tool. Multi-tools are really great. They are a jack of all trades and so they're really great at just doing everything and really anything from working on your vehicle or any vehicle you're using to, uh, you know, different survival tasks. Uh, they just have a lot of tools once again this is the surge and in all honesty i know quite a few people run the super tool 300 and there's nothing wrong with the super tool 300 uh it's just that the surge is a upgraded it's essentially the bigger brother to the super tool 300 because it does everything that the super tool 300 can do but it does it better and it has even more uh tools than the super tool 300 so i personally prefer the surge and I would recommend if you are going to get a tool for everyday carry slash survival everyday carry, the Surge is very hard to go wrong with because I've carried this one for now around four years and it has just been really great. I have loved it so much and uh, no regrets on the Surge. I mean, it is a big piece of stainless steel, but in all honesty, the functionality being considered, it is well worth the cost in my opinion. Anyways guys, that has been a look at the things in particular that I carry for a survival EDC. Uh, once again, if you want to check out any of my EDC updates, definitely go to my videos or my uploads. I post one about every other month, and in that I'll go more comprehensive. And so next is cordage. And the way I carry cordage realistically, and some people they may actually carry uh, you know, uh, just like a spool of paracord, or maybe they carry some type of, you know, actual paracord something. But uh, the easiest way I carry paracord is just on bracelets. And I know I make bracelets for sale, but this isn't necessarily a direct plug to the those bracelets. But in all honesty, this is a very easy way of carrying survival cordage. And it's, a, like I said, very easy way and actually a very fun way to carry survival cordage. This one in particular is around 12 feet of cord. Another one that I have here that I'm actually legitimately wearing, I just took off. This one, and sorry, it's totally overshadowed by the sun, but this one in particular, hopefully that lighting's better, you know, is around another 12 to 13 feet of paracord. And so if I'm carrying both of these, I'm carrying at least 20 feet of paracord on me. So that is an easy way, an easy and effective way to carry quite a bit of paracord just on your body. And once again, paracord has almost endless uses. It's a very great thing to have on you. And once again, in the form of a bracelet, it makes it extremely palatable to carry. Next and lastly is a bandana. Now I only recently started carrying bandanas, but really, if you just go look online, they have endless uses. You can use them for so many things. I'd recommend maybe if you're going for more of a survivalistic aspect, you might carry a bright orange one as opposed to a dark green one like this so that you can flag down attention. 
uh, easier, but uh, aside from flagging down attention, you can also use these for breathing. I know uh, when there was a lot of forest fires a couple of years ago, I actually used bandanas like this one to high effect to actually help me breathe while I was still doing more rigorous tasks. So they have a large portion of helpful things such as that and many more things. Worst case scenario, you can also use it as a tinder uh, or make char cloth with it for your next fire. So they do have other uses such as that and that you could use this and the stainless steel bottle to make uh, char cloth. So, you know, there are definitely methods for that. Um, but anyways, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this look at my survival everyday carry. Now, this is not, like I said, all that I carry on an everyday basis. And if you would like to see an EDC update, just go check out my videos. I do one about every other month. And that'll go into a more comprehensive idea of just what all I carry. But uh, this is the stuff that I generally carry uh, that specifically relates to uh, survival, especially in the winter. So hopefully you've enjoyed this look at some survival essentials for everyday carry life. And hopefully this has kind of shown you guys ways to integrate things into your life so that if you ever get launched into a survival scenario, hopefully you don't, but if you ever do, you can use some of this stuff to help you. Don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, and that's it for now. I'm out.